creating jobs, and we need to help them establish companies. But helping them establish companies is not enough. We need to make sure that they are sustainable. So it's not only the conditions, good economic conditions for sustained growth, but we also need to let them have access to long-term sources of capital. So that is why we're making the proposal that we should seriously consider creating second tier capital markets dedicated for SMEs that are more flexible in terms of listing requirements, ongoing reporting, and regulation. So what's next? This is a critical aspect. Um, finance, financing SMEs is, is critical. The government policy initiatives are very important, of course, um, but we need these sources of long-term funding. We need to focus on the private sector. The growth in terms of jobs has necessarily to come from the private sector. That's where you will get the innovation. That's where you will get the growth. So again, that's why we're talking about national and regional second-tier markets for SMEs and as well um, FOEs, family-owned enterprises. We've looked in detail at this, um, and we believe that this is feasible and can be done within one year. Well, Thank you, Dr. Saidi, for the very rich presentation. I'm sure all of you appreciate that, uh, learning something new today. Uh, next, we have um, f uh, our representative, uh, Vanessa Abernathy, acting head of listing from Dubai, NASDAQ, to address us. Thank you. Thanks very much, Alex. I was quite excited to have the opportunity at this point to come and speak to you because we've got some new developments happening right now at NASDAQ Dubai that are actually going to make it a lot easier for SMEs to list on our market. So the focus of my presentation today is going to be on how you would prepare to list on the NASDAQ Dubai market and specifically how we've opened up our listing criteria to ensure that SMEs are able to list on the NASDAQ Dubai market. I first want to address the issue of, of why would you list on NASDAQ Dubai. NASDAQ Dubai does have some rather unique um, factors that we don't necessarily see in other markets in the region. For example, there's the ability for SMEs to price their securities at listing at market value. So we're in a situation at NASDAQ Dubai where the regulator doesn't step in and put a value on your securities. You're able to run, the, the banks are able to value your securities, so you're advised through the process of running a book build and at the time you list, the securities would list at market value. Interestingly, we also have very low free float requirements, and those are going to be um, lowered even further under the new listing rules. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But what this means is that family-owned businesses and founding shareholders are able to maintain a much higher level of control over their shares post-listing. There's also the ability on NASDAQ Dubai for the founding shareholders to sell down some of their interests into the offering, uh, meaning that they can take some reward immediately out rather than having to wait for trading on the secondary market. We have no foreign ownership restrictions which NASDAQ Dubai imposes on companies. Uh, and we're seeing um, significantly increased levels of liquidity in the aftermarket now that there's been the merger between the NASDAQ and DFM platforms. I'm going to turn now um, to our listing rules, and specifically I'm going to talk to you about our more flexible eligibility criteria, which really will open up the market specifically to SMEs. I'm going to talk about the new free float rules, which will give even higher levels of control to founding shareholders. Uh, I'm going to also talk about uh, some, some rules that are specifically um, geared towards creating even further liquidity in the market. There's some new exceptions to the continuous disclosure regime, which I think you'll be interested to hear about. And we have more flexible financial reporting criteria, which are going to specifically make it easier on an ongoing basis for listed SMEs on the market. Um, I'll also briefly touch on, on the removal of the sponsor regime, which is one of our ongoing requirements. I don't propose to go right through this table, but this table is quite, quite significant because it outlines what, what we've done in terms of flexibility for our eligibility criteria. 
So the position under the existing listing rules is that companies have always needed to show that they will have expected market capitalization of 50 million at the time they list, and that's US dollars. Now, of course, for a lot of SMEs and family-owned businesses, that's, that's a very high threshold and something that they haven't been able to meet. So to specifically address that, what we've done is we've opened up the eligibility criteria, and we now have four either-or tests. So it's important to note, you only need to meet one of these. The two that you'll be most interested to hear about is that it is possible to list now if your market capitalization is only 20 million US dollars, or if you're having difficulty with that test, there's another test which is the assets test, which means if you have only net tangible assets of 10 million US dollars, you're eligible to list on the market. That, that test would also require you to have working capital of $5 million. But the other key thing to note is that for both the new 20 million market capitalization test and the assets test, you will not have to have a three-year financial track record like you've traditionally needed with NASDAQ Dubai. So if you're a fledgling company, a new company that has a, a shorter track record, it is possible for you to access the market under the 20 million market cap test or the assets test if you meet those criteria. The free float on NASDAQ Dubai has traditionally been quite low. We have a 25% free float, which means that 75% of your shares are able to be maintained in the hands of the founding shareholders. What we've done to make this even more relaxed is we're adding a, adding a rule that up to 50% of that free float, so in other words 12.5% of the company, may be held in the form of preference shares. So it would be possible under the new rule for you to issue preference shares to, to make up 12.5% of your total securities. Those shares would have no votes. So those would be offered to the market, but wouldn't enable the holders to have any vote. Uh, and so the c company is even kept closely, more closely held by family. The free float under this requirement therefore drops to only 12.5%, so the family can maintain control of the rest. We're also um, improving the liquidity by specifically targeting, re targeting retail investors. Um, I think we're in a, in a region here where retail is very important in terms of liquidity. For a primary listing, we're going to say at the time you list, we'd expect to see at least 400 security holders. Um, some people are having a little bit of difficulty with that test, so what we've done is we've created another test instead, which may be used, which is that you can set aside 10% of your offering at the day you list for retail investors. And you have to make best endeavours to place that 10% with retail. Um, if after making best endeavours you don't manage to do that, then there's an ability to claw back. So NASDAQ would enable you to place whatever doesn't get placed with retail with institutions. We think that test should be reasonably easy to meet, and we've had feedback from quite a few investment banks that suggest they're happy with that concept. On a going forward basis, continuous disclosure is another area where SMEs often have difficulty. They're used to running their business on a closely held basis, and to suddenly become listed and have to announce everything that's important to the market immediately is a little bit daunting. So what we've done is we've put some exceptions in the new listing rules. So the general rule is that you still have to announce immediately any price sensitive information. So any material information about the company or its business that might move the price of shares generally would have to be announced. What we've done is we've said that there are some situations now where it will be appropriate for the company to, to maintain the information to themselves and not announce it to the market. Those exceptions are, for example, where the information is confidential and a reasonable person would not expect it to be disclosed, and if the information then meets a number of other criteria. So, for example, if it's information relating to a trade secret about the company, we wouldn't expect it to be announced. If it's information about an incomplete negotiation, such that to announce it might be detrimental to the negotiation, we wouldn't expect it to be announced. So the basic rule now will be any information that may damage the company if it comes to market can now be withhold, withheld under the new rules until such time as it is more appropriate for that information to be released. Um, NASDAQ Dubai, of course, will, will never wish to see a false market trading, so there's always the ability for NASDAQ.